welcome to PUBG Notes, the show where I download you on everything PUBG Continental Series North America, as well as some things that maybe you just didn't need to know. Starting off, let's take a look back at PCS1 for North America, and let's see how things went all the way back to just a few weeks ago. By now, we all know that coronavirus sucks. You know who doesn't suck? Oh, Oath Gaming, they're great. Oath Gaming kicked off the PUBG Continental Series North America by winning the charity showdown. Oath came up clutch by finishing first in the last four matches. Can you believe that? I can't, but I watched it, so it's true. On top of that impressive accomplishment, they also got $100,000 donated to the charity of their choice. So suck on that, COVID. The action-packed three-week group stage showcased the elite skill of PUBG pros, with SDK and Oath picking up the individual accolades. But when it was all said and done, Sonics came out on top. Backed by popular demand, of course, the Pick'em Challenge is your chance to earn some sweet, sweet PUBG skins while also showing off your knowledge of the competitive scene by really sticking it to your friends and their life decisions on who they believe will come out on top in the PCS2. In the PCS1 Grand Finals, Shoot to Kill overcame a zero kill match one and went on to dominate and take home the win despite a late surge from Wildcard Gaming, who potentially had the game in their own hands but just couldn't close it out as SDK showed absolute dominance over the field in Lumber as they were able to close out the victory. We learned a lot during the PCS one. Here's my notes. SDK could win majors despite their long history of falling just short, being the bridesmaids and not the brides, they finally find themselves on top of PCS one grand finals. We also learned that wildcard gaming can absolutely compete, something that we knew from the beginning, but they struggled to show us. This roster is finally coming together and seeing them take second is exactly what we expected. We're also in an exciting meta where teams are aggressive and constantly looking for fights and those kill points. We saw that the barrel is ridiculous and we may very well be moving to a 762 meta moving into PCS2. Rivalries are alive and strong with SDK and Sonics still hating each other in an oh so adorable way. I don't like that SDK is winning. I think Hell would have to freeze over for Shrimzy to win a championship. Now that Sonics have picked up their very own Australian, we'll see if Tickleton can ping abuse just as hard as Luke. 12. Individual performances are as hype as ever, of course. Speaking of Luke 12, my dual MVPs for PCS1 are both from the Iron Man, of course. How could they not be? Purdy Curdy, the man that has proven to us that he is a 100% finisher. And Luke 12, with one of the sickest clutch plays in potentially all of PUBG I think I have ever witnessed in my whole life of living and playing this game. One of the biggest surprises to me were Fable, who started in first place despite a poor showing in the phase and ended up in sixth. Well done, Fabled. 303 also followed, coming in eighth after just barely qualifying for the grand finals. You love to see it. My biggest disappointments were, of course, Exodus and Duel. I expected much more out of these talented squads other than 10th out of Exodus, and Duel going all the way down to the Challengers Cup, which they did end up winning, but at the very same time, they shouldn't have been there in the first place. We'll see how both those squads do in PCS2. PCS1 delivered, and it's great to see that the competitive scene for PUBG is healthy and still kicking ass. Here's my notes on what to expect for PCS2. First, let's take a look at who's moving up to PCS2 and who's moving out. After a disappointing group stage in PCS1, Duel was relegated, but rebounded to win the Challenger Cup 1 and move back up to PCS2. Also moving up is San Diego Rarity, Six Feet Under, Orion, and Calm Card. Teams moving out are Snow Patrol, Atheris, 64 Up, and Livid. During the offseason, San Diego Rarity picked up Innate, and I expect bigger things from them in PCS2 with a much stronger roster moving forward. I expect all the teams that finished in the bottom to step up in Phase 2 simply because their performance in Phase 1 was just that disappointing. Other things to watch for in PCS2 is top teams staying strong. The high skill on STK, Oath, and Sonics should continue to give other teams problems. I was also pleasantly surprised to see Houston Hardships finally play to their ability, especially with such a talented IGL in Maluk. I'm very curious to see if they can build on that success, or if it was just a flash in the pan with this roster. A team clueless needs to get a clue. They just barely squeak their way into PCS2, and that is way too low of a finish for this roster. Before we go, I'm going to finish off my notes with some predictions. 
I'm calling it now. The winner of PCS2 will be Sonics, especially with the addition of their very own ping abuser in Tiggleton. That's if he's not already in the States. My dark horse pick has to be Houston Hardships. I truly believe that the man Maluk is going to lead this team to victory. If it is the same roster, even if it's not, I do believe in this team and what they're capable of. My rebound pick and comeback kids have to be Exodus. I'm really waiting for these guys to finally show what they are capable of. There's so much talent on their roster. They absolutely should not be in 10th place or anywhere near that position. And the team that I think may fall or struggle, it's got to be Clueless. I just haven't seen anything from these guys that has shown me that they're really ready to compete at this level together. My MVP for PCS2, just like it was for PCS1, is going to be an Aussie. And that's going to be Tiggleton. He's going to ping abuse his way all the way to the top, baby. And of course, my pick for the caster MVP is, uh, it's me. <laughs> Who are we kidding? It's me. I'm great. We have some late breaking notes news several teams have changed names going into pcs2 maybe in hopes of better results maybe because they were bored or maybe because they had no choice we may never know but what we do know is exodus is now yahoo yeah yahoo yeah yahoo we'll never know wildcard gaming has become team veritas calm card shall now be known as gravity Six Feet Under has gone to Dips Free. Dodge has transformed into 22 esports. That's a lot of esports. And Team Clueless has decided to challenge ATC for most interesting team name and are now Gang Gang Orangutan. See it now in headlines. Winning PCS2 is Gang Gang Orangutan. Well, that's it, everyone. Those are my PUBG notes. I'm sure that. Those are going to be 100% correct. No one's going to have anything to say about it. No one's going to argue any of those facts because that's what they are. They're just facts. And that's just good science. So that's been it for this first episode of PUBG Notes, guys. Please let us know what you want to see in the future. And I'll see you next time.